Hello friends, in this video we will learn how to use the inbuilt queue data structure in C++. As we have learned, queue is a linear data structure which follows FIFO that is first in first out method and the two ends of the queue are called front and rear where insertion always takes place at the rear and the elements are accessed or removed from the front. As we have learned earlier, the basic operations that we perform on a queue are NQ that is to insert an element in the queue, DQ which is to remove an element from the queue, show front to display the element at front and is empty to check if the queue is empty or not. And we know that all these operations are performed in constant time that is big O of 1 and previously we have implemented queue using array and linked list. So now let's look at the inbuilt data structure queue in C++ which is defined in the header file queue. And the general format for creating a queue is we write queue and define the type of the queue within less than and greater than sign followed by the name of the queue. That is, if we have to create a queue q1 of type integer, we will simply write q int q1. And similarly, if we have to create a character queue, we will replace int with char. And likewise, we can create a queue of any type. Now we have a few predefined functions to perform various operation with queues. So let's look at them one by one. For n queue, suppose we define an integer queue q1. Then to insert the value in this queue, we will use the push function, which will insert the value that we pass as argument in the queue. So for example, if we write q1.push1, this will insert the value 1 in the queue with both front and rear pointing to this element. Again, if we push the value 2, then 2 will be inserted in our queue. Similarly, we can insert as many values as we want. Now to display the element at front, we have the front function which returns a reference to the element at front. And we can also display the element at rear, that is the last element in the queue, using the back function which returns a reference to the element at rear. So suppose we have this queue 1, 2, 4 and if we print q1.front and q1.back, the output would be 1 and 4. And we can also use the front and back function to manipulate the value of elements at front and back. That is, if we add a value to q1.front, let's say we add the value 2, then the element at front would become 1 plus 2, that is 3. Next, to perform the dq operation, we have the function pop, which removes the front element from the queue. That is, if we have this queue 3 to 4 and we perform the pop operation, it will remove the element 3 from the queue. Next, to check if the queue is empty or not, we have a function empty, which returns a boolean value to indicate whether the queue is empty or not. That is, if we print q1.empty, it will display 0 if the queue is not empty, else it will display 1. Next, to get the number of elements in the queue, we have the function size which returns the size of the queue. That is, if we have this queue 1 to 4 and we display the size of the queue, then the output would be 3. For better understanding, I recommend that you download the source code linked in the description. Thank you for watching.